Right, Amir at Michael Ryan, we're looking back on what's been a pretty good day for you as a former Westmeath and Waterford manager with both teams winning league titles. If we can start with Waterford, what an impressive performance out there again. You know, four goals scored, averaging three a game. There's a real kind of lethal goal potency about your old team, Michael. Yeah, and in fairness, you know, they've shot five or six top class players today and it just goes to show the strength of the panel. I thought they played very, very well, used the ball well. Anytime Cork came back into the game, we went back down the field and looked like scoring a goal. Tremendous performance right through the pitch, but I suppose Stephen Bennett was, was just was one of those performances that you know that you, we're glad to say we're here to witness it because he was incredible. Scored two fantastic goals and uh, right through led the team from start to finish. But we're happy to win. It is the league. It's important to win it. But there's bigger days coming up. Already thinking about Tipperary and Walsh Park in a few years' time. But just to look at Stephen Bennett's performance, he was lethal with the freeze and the two goals, particularly that second goal. It was just almost single-mindedness to go for goal when the chance was there. He's actually, in my opinion, he's a very intelligent hole. He won a ball out there in front of the stand, won a fantastic ball in the air, took four or five strides in field, could have, could have got the point, saw there was a gap in the defence, took the ball on, and then when he was after making up 25 yards, he saw people coming to him. He put the ball in his hole and took it an extra three or four steps, lost the last defender, bottom, bottom right hand corner of it, absolutely brilliant goal. He has fantastic brains, fantastic vision, and you know, he's, he's at the top of his game right now. Tell me about the difference Desi Hutchins has made. He had a quiet game maybe by his own standards at times tonight, but he pops up there with a the goal at the end. Wonderful first-time finish when the ball broke to him. Since he's come back from 2019, I think he's added a little bit of an extra dimension to the Waterford forward line. He has. He's very elusive. He's very difficult to, to mark. And I think that probably comes from, from his soccer background because playing up front in soccer is all about finding space. It's all about get, getting behind defenders. And he's very good at that. He times his runs. He doesn't run in straight lines. He makes runs from A to B to C to D. He's, he's light and fast around the pitch. And I think he's given us a new dimension. Before, if you tried up one or two one of our fouls, you know, you, 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 you were happy. You know, you had, you had the whole thing curtailed. But now you've got Stephen Bennett, you've got Patrick Cullen, you've got, you've got Desi Hutchison. And, 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 you know, and us, us and least when he comes back, if, if he wins his place back, and that's not, that's not guaranteed with Liam Cal, we have a lot of options right around the pitch, but Desi gives us a new dimension. And over the last two years, he's got very good to win his own ball as well, because he wouldn't have been used to the physicalities in Gaelic games in soccer, because, you know, in soccer, you're not allowed, you're not allowed to lash into fellas or, or crash into fellas, but he's improving all the time, and he's a very important part of our setup. Good problem for Liam Cal to have. Jamie Barron coming back to fitness. We saw Stephen Bennett come in today. Callum Lyons coming back. There's a lot of players that could still potentially fit in, like Port Manning's had a very limited role so far. These are very talented players who are chomping to get into this team. Yeah, but I know I, I know Liam Cal very well, and there's no guarantee they'll get into this team. Everybody's got to earn the right, and every time you go out and you wear a Waterford jersey, if you're not performing, you're going to be called a show. So if those guys are out there or continue to play well, they'll hold that jersey. But it's a real, it's a nice option to have. Jamie did a bit of training this morning in our own, in our own local club. He's my own club, mm. and he's inching his way back. He's a top class player. But every fellow that gets on the Waterford team has to fight on the right to get on the team. And, you know, it will give Liam better options going forward. And we'll need him because the Munster Championship is four games in four weeks. So in, in, in 29 days, you know, you have to play four games. And they'll be tough games because you're talking about like a Limerick, you're talking about Cork again, who will be stung from tonight because mm -hmm. they won't be happy with what happened here. Clear above an Ennis is never easy. And, and Tipperary, people are writing off Tipperary. I wouldn't write off Tipperary. There's a lot of fellas in that Tipperary dressing room who've won a lot of medals. And they've won under 20 and under 21 as well. So Tip will come down to Welsh Park and they'll give this a right go. And if we're not right, they'll turn us over. All right, Tipperary wanted to have Liam Cal on the sideline for Tipperary here. He decided to stay with Waterford. How happy were you that he made the decision to stay with this team who he's brought to, you know, really the brink of being the closest team to Limerick over the last two, three years? Absolutely thrilled. No bones about it. In my opinion, he's the best manager in the country. And any county would love to have Liam as manager. I think he looked at all the options. First of all, he didn't get the Tipperary job a couple of years ago. Maybe he felt he should have got it. And then, you know, when they came looking for him again. And I don't know what the terms and conditions were. I mean, maybe he didn't get a free reign to get it, but we are delighted to have him because, first of all, you know, everybody knows where they stand with Liam Cahill. His, his honesty and his commitment. And if you're doing the stuff for Liam Cahill, he'll come here to pick you. If you're not, you'll soon be found out and you'll be sent packing and sent home. So I'm absolutely thrilled. Was a bit concerned, but when, I, when that news is confirmed, to me it was a weight off my shoulders. And every one of us supporter should be really happy because this, this performance tonight is a typical Liam Cal performance. Mm. Everyone fighting hard, everybody running for the ball. I've seen him training. I'm, I'm involved in the Waterford under 20 hauling team. We train beside him. This is the fittest team in the country and Liam doesn't take any prisoners and also Michael Bevins and in fairness to Stephen Frampton and Tony Brown as well. They have a really good management team. So thrilled to have him and looking forward to more good days with him. Yeah, I think we saw that strength condition, particularly with the Tipperary game going back to Walsh Park. The last 15 minutes of that game were really impressive. You could tell the state that they're at physically. How close are that Waterford team now to Limerick though when Championship comes out? 
Well, I think, in fairness, Limerick will have to come back a bit for people to beat him. Mm. And, and that may happen. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it will happen because Limerick are still, still the benchmark. And they have, they have a strong panel of players. They have lost Peter Casey this year. There's one or two fellas, you know, that you know. That, and, and funny, like, if you need to keep everybody fit. If, if anything was to happen to Keane Lynch, and I'm not hoping it will happen to him because he's, a, he's, 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 he's the benchmark for everybody around the country. So they need everybody to get fit. But there is the question of the appetite. If Limerick can maintain their appetite and keep holding, then they are, the, they are the best team in the country. But the gap is closing all the time. And I'm hopeful that, you know, that we'll pull it out of the bag and maybe catch them. There's plenty for Cork to work on. I'm sure their full back line won't like the video analysis of some of the goals that were scored with the way the ball was run through. Again, they'll have to be very disappointed. They gave so much ball to that water for the half, half back line. Now, your half back line played very well, but I thought Cork were going to run at them more than they put the ball back into Tyke de Burke. Yeah, but in fairness to the Cork full back line, first of all, it has to be said they didn't play well, but there was gaping holes in front of them. Mm. Three of the water goals were caused by. By, by Waterford players running straight through the heart of the Cork defence. That problem was further out the field. To, to, to simplistic to say it was all the fair to the full back line. We were running from out the field, we weren't being tracked. And also, there was some fantastic ball being put in from out the field. And when you're playing the full back line, when you're on a quality player, if the ball is coming right, sometimes there's not much you can do. There is a lot of soul searching for Cork to do. They're not, they're, you know, they'll come back, there's no question about that. But I think it's, it's a big campaign now for, for Kieran Kingston. He's been involved with eight years. He was there with Jimmy Barry Murphy for three years. He was uh, selected for the first two years, then he was coach, and then he stepped away, came back as manager for, for, for two years, stepped away again, and now he's back in his third term. So it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big you know, a big job for him to do a turn this round now. But look, there's 650-something thousand people in Cork, and you know, there's surely 20 good hours, and they will be stung by that, and there will be a response. But it has to be said, this game, the first round of the championship against Limerick, is now huge for Cork. Yeah, they need to dust themselves down and probably hurl in the way they did at the Gaelic grounds, particularly for the first half of that game last month, where like I was very impressed by Cork that day. Yeah, but uh, in fairness, that was early in the season. The intensity mm. levels weren't there. And, uh, but they had, there's no question they have it. But they're still depending on the fellas like Patrick Hogan and, and Seamus Halliday and Conor Lane. Those fellas played in the Ireland final nine years ago. So they're not young chickens, you know. They're, they've been around a lot. They have a lot of hurling done. And, you know, and, and it's just like that. You know, as you said, there's a few things they haven't sorted out. And I have no doubt, they, and it isn't the fault of the management they haven't sorted them out. They've worked hard. Mm. But when you cross the white line there, you hand over control of the whole thing to the players. And, and, and tonight there was no leadership out there. There was a lot of Cork fellas. There was, at the start of the second half, when Cork needed to get on top, there was a ball right in front of us there. There was four different Cork players on the ball. Any single one of them could have had a shot for a point. But they passed the book and eventually gave away the ball. Yeah, two very different performances. Six points down against Kilkenny last week. They dug in at Parky Cueve and stayed in the game. They drifted once the third goal went in realistically today. Just to talk about the Division 2A final, because we're here to watch your old team Westmead overcome down. A horror start for them. They concede five of the first six scores, and you're thinking after 12 minutes, maybe this down team is going to carry the crest of the form they had over the last two weeks of the league. But Westmead won very comprehensively in the end. Yeah, I, I was never in any doubt about it because I know what these fellas can do. Now, they did start poorly, there's no question about that. I suppose they were overwhelming favourites, even though they only had beaten them early on in the year. I always felt that when you were coming down the stretch, they'd have the physicality, and they had, you know, these Westmead fellas, they've played, they played here in Tullus a few years ago, against, and they've played against Wexford, they've played against Limerick. They've played in big games, played in Crow Park. You know, they won the Joe McDonough. So I, I never doubted the fact they'd win it. They'll be disappointed the way they played in the first 15 minutes of the game. But, but once David Lennon got that first goal, I mean, the whole thing just took off. He's some player to be able to bring in, isn't he? Like, I hear he's very kind of, let's say, considered about his training. It doesn't necessarily go across to Abbotson when they're training all the time. He's nursing a few injuries he's had. But you see the impact with that hat-trick today. He's such a good finisher. But not alone, he, he's, he's actually, a, he's, he's, he's a guest guy as well. You know, he's, he's a funny kind of character. And look, you know, and, and like he's played Division One holding, he's played he's played at the highest level with Galway. He's played in the big games in Cork Park, and for him to come to Westmead is huge. And three cracking goals there today. His first goal in particular got the ball out in the right wing. Had an awful lot to do now, coming in at an angle, put the ball across the across over the goalie into the top corner of the net. Literally crashed it into the stanchion. You know that was a crucial goal because that just got Westmead on track. But he's he's he brings something else to the team because. You know, I'm, I'm sure they look up to him because he, he's, he's, he's done it all, really. Mm. Apart from, you know, he probably would feel maybe he would have liked to have punched a few more of the medals. He's done it all. And for him to be playing Division 2 holding is, is, is fantastic for Westmead. And it also gives him great leadership on the pitch because they know if they get the ball to hit him, he's capable of finishing it. One of those young leaders, Killian Doyle, you had him as a young player coming through initially. He has developed into all the potential we thought he would have. Again, he was so good with freeze and so good from a general play today. Yeah, I mean, his wrists are incredible. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's give him the ball. 
And I always feel, you know, in, uh, on teams, if you get the ball to the man in the right position, he'll finish it. He got it, got a lot of scores yet tonight, some really good points in the the field. He's a fantastic holder. Sometimes I feel maybe he could be a little bit fitter, but I suppose, you know, you know maybe, you know, maybe that's the kind of guy he is. But when he has, when he's on the ball, he, he can score and he's as good as anybody. He knows exactly what the posts are and he usually nails it. It's difficult for them because if they go to a Lens Championship campaign, they have Kilkenny in a couple of weeks' time now in the first round of that. They'll go to Division 1A, they get off these fixtures from this year. Very, very hard division with the teams that are there. But still, if you're an aspiring team from Division 2A, you want to get that exposure to play against the top teams. Yeah, well, that, when I was with Westmead, that was, the, that was the aim and the target and the management and the players. They always wanted to be playing in the big games. You know, they might be a little bit more tuned in for it now because they've played in Division 1 of the National League, they've had some big games and they've, they've shipped some, some heavy defeats but they've also played some good holding, you know. Mm. So this game against Kilkenny is absolutely massive. I think it's in Cusick Park in Mullingar. Not the greatest Kilkenny team of all time but there will be a backlash and with Cody around, you know, they, they'll be difficult to beat. But, you know, I hope they go out and perform and, and play it really well. Some of these fellas would have beaten Kilkenny in underage under 21 a few years ago. So it's, 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 it's a very big day for Westmead Holding. I feel for Down a little bit because it's a team who almost got promotion for the first time since 2007. They had topped the regular section of the league. They had won at Westmead. They'd beaten Kerry in the last round of the normal league. But with only one spot to go up, it's very cruel that they have to go back for another season of Division 2A now. Yeah, and they started very well. I tell you, you know, they scored five points early on. They, were, they had good energy levels around the pitch. They missed three frees in the, early in the game and probably that didn't. And they had six or seven wides in the first 20 minutes. That didn't help them. But... You know, there's certainly something to work with them down there. You know, I, I like their attitude, and they kept going to the very end. They kept, you know, they kept fighting to the very end. They got a few points even when, when all seemed lost. So there's somebody up there doing, doing, doing things right. They don't have uh, the big, a big pool of players like Westmead. There's only eight clubs in Westmead. They don't have a similar similar setup. They have a small pool of players, but the people are, are involved in holding in those counties are every bit as enthusiastic as Water or Kilkenny or anybody anybody else. So you know, I think there, there, there's some good days ahead for them too. Just to settle, I know you were having a conversation in the hallway before we talked about who's going to get out of Munster. It's going to be a shark cage of a group to try and get teams out with what we've seen so far in the league where most Munster teams have looked pretty decent. They do, and look, from our point of view, from a lot of us' point of view, that game against Tipperary is huge. If we were to lose that game, we then have got to go to Limerick for the second match. Hmm. And to, li- to win in Limerick would be, you know, would be a gigantic task. So it's, it, everything is on the day. Also... Limerick play cock in the first round. I think you got to win your first game. I'd be hopeful we'll get out. I think we will get out, but we will get out by performing on the day. And you know, this this performance tonight that's worth nothing going into Munster. It's a new game. It's a new ball game. You've got to start again. You've got to produce the goods, and that's uh, that's the way it is. And it, Munster is, is is a minefield. There's no question about that. And you couldn't rule out Clare or Tipperary or, or, or you couldn't rule out anybody. So you know, and you could end up in four points and not qualify. You could actually. It, it, Funny enough, you could qualify with two points if somebody wins all their games and somebody else gets six points and you're going to treat him. So it's a minefield. But I wouldn't look one bit further than the throw-in in Welsh Park in two weeks' time. Good man. And how will Waterford, on the final note, deal with this expectation now? Because they're league champions. They've been to a couple of All-Ireland finals. They've been to an All-Ireland semi-final. Bally Gunner have broken what was a very long wait for a Waterford team to lift the All-Ireland club title. There's now a little bit of expectation on these lads. But Waterford have the ace in the pack. And the ace in the pack is Liam Cahill. And I can guarantee you, as I stand, I stand in front of you now, there'll be no complacency with Liam Cahill. They'll be back in training during the week. They might enjoy tonight and they might enjoy tomorrow. But next week will be business as usual. They'll be down in, 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 in Carrigan or training or maybe in Welsh Park. And they, will, and they will be ready. There's no question about that because that's Liam's forte and Michael Beaven's forte and the management team's forte. They, you know, they, they will, they will realise that Tipperary are coming to town. We have to be ready and they will make sure all of it already. I'm very confident about that. Another four goals for Waterford this evening here at Temple Stadium. Michael, good to catch up with you as always. Pleasure.